Welcome everybody. I think we're more or less uh, complete. I'm Thomas. I work for the Fietsambassade and my colleague uh, Jan, uh, also from the Fietsambassade. Fietsambassade is an organization in Ghent uh, which tries to promote cycling in uh, various ways via uh, bike repair, bike rental, uh, bike parking and all kinds of projects that we will uh, elaborate uh, further on. I think first uh, Jan will say a few words about the Fietsambassade in general. Yes, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed all the bike parade yesterday. So I think it's a good example of uh, yeah, bicycle culture, uh, bringing it in the city, not only yeah, the infrastructure, but also everyone is going to cycle with special bicycles, with a lot of animation things around, uh, getting to see things, uh, to feel, to, to, yeah, just to, to feel the culture of, uh, of Ghent and uh, the cycling culture. So the cycling embassy, uh, just to give you some more information about that, we started in 2017. Uh, it was uh, yeah, a mix of three uh, organizations, two organizations before in Ghent, uh, and then another one from the city. So they moved uh, everything in one organization, the Cycling Embassy. We are a non-profit organization, uh, so, uh, but we are linked to the city. We are an agency of the city, so they are also in the boards of the Cycling Embassy. Philippe Atté, uh, the alderman, he is also the president of the Cycling Embassy. But we also have the high schools, university, also in the board of the cycling embassy. That's also why we have a lot of green bicycles. Maybe you have one now, uh, today. These bicycles are for the students. We have 8,000 bicycles uh, we rent out to uh, students every day, uh, every year. And it's a cooperation with, with all the schools. Uh, so we, Cycling Embassy, we, we promote cycling and cycling culture. And we do that by uh, delivering services. Like Thomas uh, told you, we have a uh, bike rental, uh, we have bike repair, we do the, all the bike parking things. Like yesterday, in the, at the, the ending point of the bike parade, it was in the car parking, so in the minus one. Maybe you parked also your bicycle there. Uh, we do it often in uh, big events in the city. Uh, so we, uh, I think two years ago, we started with that, uh, asking if we could just use one level of a car parking uh, to do that. So it was not easy. <laughs> In the beginning, it was like, uh, yeah, what are you doing? And it's, it's dangerous with the cars and uh, not possible. But we managed to, to do that. And now it's like, uh, yeah, it, we have done it now two times. And, and this, this, uh, this year will be the third time. And the Vreda Smart was the first time. So the parking yesterday was the first time we could use it. Just hopefully, we can now uh, also start there with uh, events and, uh, and maybe in a few years, it will be just a cycle parking uh, and not a car parking, we hope. <laughs> uh, but we also have a lot of uh, other things. We have also bike lessons for people. Some people yesterday, they also cycled with us in, a, in, the, in the bicycle and bicycle parades. Um, we have uh, also, yeah, uh, new things, innovation. We will see also we have vending machines uh, at some places with uh, lights, bicycle lights in it and some lock, lock systems. Uh, we have bike pumps in the city. So this is all uh, a mix of bicycle culture. It's also important to mention that it's not only Cycling Embassy who is doing that. We are also uh, responsible for working together with other parties in the city who are also making culture in Ghent, who are doing things like uh, we have some uh, volunteer pro projects uh, with uh, repair cafes, for instance. Uh, we have, of course, the advocacy uh, organizations uh, on national level, but also in Ghent. Uh, we have some schools, we have people like Dierenarts, um, uh, how do you say it? Veterinary. A veterinary who, is, who has a cargo bike and comes at, at homes. Uh, so all these kind of people, uh, also the, the shops, the bike shops, of course, also important to, to mention. These are all uh, together the bicycle culture of Ghent, so we have to also give them a voice and bring together, brings uh, everyone together. Maybe I, I just end now my story for the moment. Uh, for the tour, we, we will first go to uh, a place, it's called the Krook. It's the main library of Ghent. And there we have a parking and also a bicycle point of the cycling embassy. And afterwards, we'll go to another point. It's uh, the railway station Ghent Dampoort. It's the second station of Ghent, second uh, railway station in Ghent. Also, cooperation with the railway company there we have uh, for the maintenance of the bicycle parking. And uh, we have also a bicycle point there. 
And the third uh, thing we will visit is a live campaign. It's called uh, oil and uh, air. air and oil. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So you will see uh, uh, an action we do for people from Ghent. Uh, we give free free air for, for bicycles and, and persons. Uh, so you can see it uh, live then uh, as also part of bicycle culture. Do you have questions for a moment? Yes. Yes, it's uh, important. Like I told you, we are an agency of the city. So uh, we have uh, some money of the city, especially for the parking things we do. We will see it uh, in a few minutes. Um, all the things about repair and renting concerning students, this is also subsidized by the, by the high schools, like I told a bit. But for tourists, for the other things, it's like uh, it's, we have no uh, other things, we are not subsidized. So this is all income from rev revenues from uh, people who, who let them their bicycle repair and rent a bicycle. The lessons are also subsidized by um, the city. And then we have, and this is important, uh, we are social economy. So a lot of people who work with us, you will see it in the bicycle point, they just work uh, with us temporarily for, sometimes for a few months, uh, others for uh, five years, it's a maximum. And they learn the job like a technician uh, to repair bicycles. Uh, and the idea is that afterwards they, they find a job on the regular markets. And for that, we also get some money from the Flemish government, it's a system in, in, uh, in, in Flanders that uh, people who have a distance to the labor market, then uh, as being an organization or a company, if you have those people in your uh, company, then you get some subsidies for that. How many persons? How many persons? Yeah, we're, we're about now, it fluctuates, but it's like 100 persons, I think. 100? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we have like, I think maybe 30 of the, yeah, yeah 30 or 40, uh, yeah. Yeah, so it's about 100 people on payroll, I think, and then yeah, then 30 volunteers uh, yeah. for but the bus, taxis. Uh, not uh, uh, VTEs, uh, not full equivalent persons, but also half time and uh, but 100 heads uh, persons. Uh, yeah, most of them are um, uh, persons who work for the bicycle parkings and also the bicycle points to repair uh, the the bicycles. So a lot of uh, that kind of people we have in uh, the company. Well, thank you so much for uh, hosting yeah. the event. Yeah, it's fun. It's got to be something to you know have the entire world come to uh, your city where you're working in so hard. Yeah, it's uh, been a... <laughs> a great year from the moment that we knew that uh, Ghent was going to organize yeah. up to now. It's been uh, yeah, yeah a lot of work, but but fun. Yeah, exactly. Well, and now finally. Yeah. Everyone is here and yeah, <laughs> it's great. I think yesterday with uh, the bike parade was already a, oh, a moment that we thought, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was a, a big success. What was the estimate on the number of the people in the parade? Uh, 3,000, I think, uh, really? participants. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I saw that we had lots of coordination with the police and the local authorities to yeah, help yeah, make yeah. it happen. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Also, of course, with uh, public transport, it all needs to yes. be, you know, in order. Yeah. So, well, a really so there was a real like a command center with yeah. people from the organization, police, uh, yeah. the the ambulance, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. If any incidents yeah. uh, occur. You were in the bike uh, bike parade yourself? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was filming it. Uh, yeah. I was uh, I was on the raft with okay. the '90s uh, music and the the, the spinning uh, oh, yeah, bicycles. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. didn't realize that was you. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, dressed up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a fun thing to do. So welcome at uh, the Krook. Like I told you, this is uh, one of the bicycle parkings uh, from Ghent. So we have uh, around the uh, around the whole of Ghent, we have like 
uh, 30,000 places and we have, I think, four or five uh, parkings. Uh, so this is this started here in 2018. Um, maybe just to tell you a bit the story about uh, the parking, because uh, yeah, that's something typical that maybe you will recognize that. So they built uh, this building, the main library. It's uh, very beautiful, I think, uh, for me uh, and other people. But uh, the parking was not yet ready. So the architects said this is important and the rest <laughs> is not that important. So you can imagine what happened. All people, they started uh, parking the bicycle upstairs, blocking everything. So the firemen, they said, oh, it's not good, uh, it's, uh, it's dangerous. Uh, so the cycling embassy, they told us, yeah, you have to put all the bicycles uh, there and there because it's a problem. Uh, we told them, yeah. But of course, if you open it and the park is not ready, yeah, then you have a problem. Especially in a city like Ghent, where a lot of people are cycling in the center. Okay, so uh, after six, seven months, it was ready. And then it was a yeah, challenge to get everyone in a minus one. Uh, and now, these days, I don't think there was one bicycle, maybe one or two sometimes, but uh, now everyone comes to here. I think it's a good location. It's not like in the Netherlands, of course. Uh, they are always better uh, <laughs> than us <laughs> on cycling. Um, so also, one thing maybe uh, to add here, it, it's good, but like there we have the stairs to the co-op. So it would have been more easy that people from the, from the parking here could just enter uh, here immediately. So this is not done. Uh, yeah, this is something maybe for another building, uh, next building or something like that. Uh, so you have to take the stairs. Um, we have also minus two, um, the second parking, and there is also the bicycle point of us. Um, so we are responsible for the bicycle parking. What do we do with the, with the spot, all the spots? Uh, also, uh, not only here, but also uh, uh, on the public uh, domain. So we are responsible for the cleaning of the parking. We also are responsible for the abandoned bicycles. So, uh, la so last week, I think we did it also here. Uh, we put a label on every bicycle. We think that it's an abandoned bicycle. We, we, we look at the bicycle and see if there are three things that are not good, like you have a flat tire, uh, there is a lot of dust on, 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 the, on the bicycle, and some other thing, then we say, yeah, maybe this is an abandoned bicycle. We put a label on it, and then two weeks afterwards, we come back again. If there's still a label on it, we, pick, we take it back, we take it with us. Uh, to our depot. Uh, every year we have about 6,000 uh, bicycles that we collect, but we put the, uh, all, always the, the chain on it, uh, on the bicycle. If people, they search a bicycle, they c will recognize it, uh, oh, yeah. but it's, it's then broken, so it's, uh, yeah. That's we, we, need, we need to stock the bike for at least three months yeah. in our depot to give people the chance, if we took a bike that's still actually owned by someone, they can still come and pick it up. So. It's not like we, we cut the chain and throw it into the, the, into the container or something, so yeah, people can still pick up their bike. If, uh, until a couple of years ago, we, we, we donated part of them. Some that were too broken, we just yeah, had to throw them away on the container. But now with the circular economy coming up, we have our own projects as well to upcycle a part of them. Uh, also through this, our social economy, teaching people how to fix bikes in this way building back a bike up so we can sell it as a second-hand bike mm -hmm. at uh, affordable prices. Uh, and what we also do is um, yeah, harvest parts of these bikes, mm -hmm. uh, which then in turn can be used in our repair points to repair bi bicycles. Uh, and we also offer them to uh, regular bike shops. Mm -hmm. uh, so they can also buy, buy these second-hand parts from us and then use them uh, in their shops as well. This is also one of the reasons. So you have all the green ones uh, for a lot. Uh, so we have 8,000 for students in Ghent. Ghent is a student city. We have about 90,000 uh, students uh, every year. To compare with the citizens, we have uh, the number of citizens is uh, 265,000. So we are every year in September, we are overwhelmed with students. <laughs> um, and so before the cycling embassy started, you had student and mobility, an organization was also a choice of the city and the high schools that they started. Uh, there were in the beginning yellow bikes, bikes. Uh, also to rent them, it's 80 euros for one year for students. And it's just to have more better bicycles in the city, no abandoned bicycle, possible abandoned bicycles. Uh, 
that create vandalism, uh, uh, so the cleanness of, of things. So this is a reason why they, they do it. And also because the students, if they have a, a, good, uh, a good bicycle, then maybe afterwards they will also still keep on cycling after they, they, they start working because they had a good bicycle, good experience. Everyone can rent bicycles with us, but the small, the price of 80 euros is only for students because it's subsidized. The rest not. If you want, uh, you can rent it also, a citizen can rent it. Uh, uh, for one year it's... Uh, 250, I think, or yeah. 200. 240, 250. Yeah. So we have a program also within the cycling embassy that uh, people, so they, yeah, it's, it's a cooperation with other organizations, social organizations. They, they have people who are, they have not a lot of money and then they can come to us. A lot of them, they started the bike lessons. So also the bike lessons is something that we do. And afterwards they can um, um, just buy a second hand bicycle and now it's 35 euros that they buy for one. It's not a rental system, then it's, it's uh, yeah, they, get, they can buy one. It's second hand bicycles, uh, that before they were uh, of people of the city who work for the city, so they're white and, and black. And so we do the repairing of it. We make, we, we, we take the usual parts. We, we, we make sure that the bicycle is good for, for use. Uh, and then they pay 35 euros. They have a guarantee of, I think, is it one or two years? So if something is wrong with it, and then they don't have to pay for that. So it's a program, but uh, yeah, we have more, uh, the, we have a huge demand than, uh, for the moment than, than, than we can give them. So we have a waiting list uh, for that. We've installed these a couple of years ago to actually uh, help cyclists in need. Um, so <laughs> if yeah, you leave and it's dark and you don't have a light, you can buy a light or you have a puncture, you can buy an inner tire and a small repair kit as well. Uh, if your lock doesn't work or you forgot your lock, you can buy a lock over here uh, as well. Um, it's quite successful actually, uh, both of them. I think we sell about 600 lights and 300 tires per, per year. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really, yeah, cyclists really use it. And yeah, for us, I mean, the revenue is about 12,000 euros per year. So the machine pays itself uh, over, the, over the years, actually. Yeah, the products, we try to find a balance between, you know, not too expensive, but decent quality of, 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 uh, of products like the tires are Michelin which is quite a good brand of, of, of tires. Uh, of course, these are on public domain, so there's always a bit of uh, issue of vandalism. Uh, so we provided a, like an anti-vandalism casing around it, which helps. We've had a few issues over the years, but quite minor. Um, and it's also cashless, so people aren't tempted to break into to get any cash. There's no cash, it's only, only with cards. Next to the machine, we have one of our uh, public pumps. Um, we did a study a couple of years ago to look what kind of pumps are best uh, suited for, for public, uh, public spaces, because as you know, it's quite fragile, easy to break, vandalism again. Uh, so we came up with two types. This is one of them, the traditional, you know, up and down, but it's quite robust. It doesn't bend over that easily. Um, and then there's another type that we will visit later on. Uh, which is more really on the, the street sides uh, that you can use and they have this system that you have to turn like this. Uh, it doesn't break that easily. But yeah, it's, it still remains a bit delicate, especially the pump heads. They're really always the, the weak spot of, of, of pumps in, in, in uh, public spaces. Not per se vandalism, but also just misuse because people don't always know how to properly pump the tire or how to use it. Um, so we have a crew that goes around all our pumps, I think, uh, every, two weeks, every two weeks, check the pump, do maintenance and replace the, the pump heads. Uh, that was also part of the study, you, know, you need to have something robust but also user friendly. And yeah, it's not, a, not easy to find. I think we did some adjustments ourselves to, to, yeah. to make it as good as possible. Uh, but yeah, we still need to replace them uh, regularly, of course. Uh, but yeah, also one of the services to the, the cyclists in Ghent uh, to be able to pump your tires almost everywhere in, in, in the city. So, so to add to what Thomas told you, it's important that if you have these things, this is an expensive uh, one. It's, I, I think it's, it was 12,000 euros, but it's, it's money worth. Uh, 
because uh, it's, it's, it works go good. You don't have any troubles with, that, with, with it, uh, sometimes a bit, but, but not a, a lot. Uh, vandalism proof. Um, and of course, you have to, every week, there's a person coming and who fills in uh, with the extra lights, because if it's not working, there are no lights. Uh, like, for instance, someone took out the <laughs> electricity out of it in the beginning, and then I, I came here, and I saw that there was already one week it was uh, not working. So we, you have to avoid these things that people know, okay, it's always working. You have some interesting stuff in it, uh, especially with the students. They, they go uh, at night and they, they go drinking out or do some things. And then they, oh, I, I have no, no light to go back. <laughs> the police, police here is very strict and it's important that they have the light, of course, then they can just get one here. And it's, uh, yeah, the, it's, it's, uh, not like uh, lights of one euro. It's uh, yeah, it's not too expensive, but that's also a special thing. In the beginning, we, we have searched a bit, like what can we put in in it? Uh, what will people buy? Uh, we have also some rain uh, coats, but it, they took, did not uh, buy it, so this was not uh, successful. Uh, we had some more. Uh, so the the lockers here are uh, I don't know the price is it 30 or 25 Thomas I don't 25, know yeah. 25. So we told in the beginning well. No one will, will pay this uh, at night or uh, just in a vending machine. 25 euros, this is a lot of money. So we just put some uh, yeah, um, lockers of, of 15 euro maximum in it. They were not so good. But of, of course, we thought, yeah, they, 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 they can help you for, for maybe one day or a few days. Uh, but of course, it's not a good thing that we as Cycling Embassy, we promote those kind of bad back lockers. So then we, we thought, okay, we, we just uh, try it and maybe for 25 euros, and it works, people, they buy it. So they trust it, <laughs> I think, and they buy it and uh, they have a good locker then at uh, that moment. Yeah. So welcome in our uh, bicycle point, under the crook, means beneath the crook, literally. Um, as you can see, it's quite impressive at first sight, uh, the, the bicycle point, but it has a uh, bit of its drawbacks location-wise. Um, as we are underground, obviously we aren't very visible to uh, customers. Uh, so in the beginning it was a bit of a struggle. We opened here in 2020 uh, and people couldn't find us. So it had a really slow start. It took, took about a year or so before people really knew we were here at, at the Fiets Ambassade for bike repair and bike rental. And uh, in the middle of Corona. And it was also middle of Corona that didn't help as well. Uh, but well, we're pleased to say now it, it, it works really well. Uh, we have about 500 repairs per, uh, per month that we do here, and we often have to, to close the shop uh, because we're, we're, we're full up. So it, it, uh, it's really on a roll at the moment. But yeah, it was also the story of the, the architects and, and yeah, didn't really think, think that through. But uh, yeah, now we're, we're quite, uh, quite pleased. Um, so this is one of four bicycle points that we have in the city of Ghent. We have two at the train stations and then one a bit further on where we focus on the, the student rentals that we've talk, talked about before. These, this uh, bike point and the two at the stations, we focus on bike repair and bike rental. Um, in our system of work, everyone can just come by to fix their bike. Uh, no matter what kind of bike you have, uh, we'll fix it. Uh, very normal, uh, decent city bike up to uh, speed pedelec or cargo bike, we'll, we'll fix it all. Um, it's a bit uh, different than most bike shops work these days. Uh, at most bike shops now you have to make an appointment to get your bike uh, fixed because most bike shops focus on selling bikes and then service, servicing those clients that have bought a bike at them. Uh, so most bike shops now, if you just come with your old city bike with a puncture, they will say, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm not going to, to, to uh, put my time in that. Maybe go to the Fitz Ambassade, they, they uh, focus on those kinds of bikes. Um, so we get a lot of those uh, also from students, obviously, that uh, find their way uh, 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 to us. Um, what to say? Yeah, we focus more on, on small repairs here try to help customers as quickly as we can um, so they don't have to wait too long. Uh, depending on how busy it is, we can fix the bike in one to three days, something like that. Um, we do offer replacement bikes so that you can, you can rent, I think for 10 euros, you can take a bike uh, so that you, it's your only means of transport and at least you have a, 
um, an alternative. Um, so part of the people here, uh, Jan explained, we're social economy. Uh, so part of the people here are in some kind of trajectory because they have, for various reasons, can't find a job on the uh, regular job market. Uh, so through various organizations, they find their way to, uh, to us. We give them a crash course in bicycle repair in our, um, uh, how do you call it, uh, operating, um, yeah, we have a small school. Yeah. <laughs> uh, training. training center, yeah, that's it. Uh, it's, called. it's called Bidon uh, with an instructor. That's two to three weeks, and then they go to a, a, a bicycle point uh, where they actually start uh, working on, on bikes uh, of customers, but of course, constant, continuously learning uh, and under supervision. Uh, but it's, of course, very valuable work uh, for us and for them um, to do this. And this way, it's sometimes it's just a couple of months, sometimes a few years, and then hopefully when they leave, they can find you know, easy, more easily find a job on the regular market. Uh, because I don't know how it is in other countries, but uh, bike technicians are very hard to, to come by these days. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really people that are looked after on the job market. Uh, so very valuable. Then we have the bike rental. Um, so here we focus more on tourists and uh, people living in Ghent. We have on display a couple of our special bikes that we explain that people can test or rent for, for a couple of days or, or so. Um, so yeah, it's actually bikes for all purposes, for all ages. We have, uh, we have uh, types, foldings, ty um, folding bicycles, cargo bikes, uh, long tails. It's, it's all here. We also have some uh, buggies and uh, wheelchairs, which, well, it's, we rent those out for free actually. Uh, yeah, the people who are, have limited uh, mobility, they can uh, take it for, for free. Yeah. That's for free, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can uh, rent a maximum for two days because, uh, yeah. So getting back to the parking uh, facility that we just saw, yeah. who is the primary audience and customer there in that location? That's a specific location. Mm -hmm. um, I think mainly uh, people going to the library. Uh -huh. Also a lot of people working uh, in the area because there's a few uh, offices yeah. Yeah. around. Yeah. So uh, yeah, commuters actually yeah. Yeah. using it uh, to stall their bike uh, during the day. Yeah. Oh. One of the things I'm noticing is just how diverse the program is. There's so many different aspects to everything that you all do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we sometimes say uh, we do too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially because, uh, you know, as, as Jan explained in the beginning, we're an organization that it's, it's a combination of three organizations flown into one. Yeah. And exactly. every one of those three organizations had its specific projects and stuff. Yeah. At some point, it was just too much, and we yeah. we, we had to cut in, in projects yeah. and, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We call that mission drift when you start drifting. Yeah. Away yeah. From exactly. Your core and exactly. You know. So that that's all we did. We say, okay, we need to get our bases good, good first. Right. You know, a strong base. Yeah. And then we can expand with other projects, and then yeah. I think that's what what we've done. Yeah. And, and you also uh, don't know what's going to take off and really like resonate with people. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, true. true <laughs> Even true. to the surprise, you know, to to, to the, you're like shock and going, oh wow, cycling it without age is like taking off. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like okay, that's a problem if it takes off too much. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you need to set you need to set limits. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because. Or, or also, could, also for the health for, yeah. of your employees, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We just uh, park on the right here. Yeah.
Okay, um, welcome everyone. This is our bike point at uh, Dumport Station. It's a bike point that we open in collaboration with uh, NMBS as NCB, the Belgian uh, train uh, yeah. organization. Yeah. So Denis here is from uh, SNCB and he'll yeah. give some information about uh, yeah, train the train station if you want and also yeah. a bit about how we work together with yeah. uh, the bike point. Exactly. So my name is Denis Brachet, I'm an intermodal manager for SNCB. So I, I work on the intermodal strategy of SNCB as well as just the feed the bike strategy of SNCB. So I'll tell you more about this station. This is Dampo, the second station of Ghent. It's about 160 trains uh, per day that uh, leave from the station, uh, mainly uh, going to Antwerp. So three trains per hour, also local trains to local destinations. Also on the other side to Kortrijk and, and the coast and also all the way to France actually. Some IC trains drive there and stop there. So it's a, it's a kind of medium station for us. If you go to St. Peter's, you'll see it's much larger stations, a lot of much, much more passengers. I think if I remember well, there's about 5,000 passengers per day here uh, boarding on the trains on weekdays. <coughs> As you know, uh, there's been the pandemic, so it's a bit less than in 2019. But in the, in the weekend, it's, it's more, than, more than before. Uh, there's really a switch in terms of train travel from uh, going to work by train and less people going to work by train and more uh, just for leisure. Uh, here, you have uh, really the standard bike parking as we want it according to our bike strategy. So it's uh, here, it's uh, re relatively new. It's like four years ago that it was uh, opened. So you have uh, always covered. There's always covered. There are also cameras to uh, supervise, to monitor the, the bike parking, and uh, always lit also at night. This is actually the basic requirement for our customers. They, they expect this, uh, so covered from the rain. Here, it's, uh, it's Ghent, so it's really a biking city. So there, we directly started with double, double racks. Uh, in total, I think we're about um, 4,400 parking spaces. What you'll see as well, is that uh, you also have a secured bike parking. Maybe I'll, I'll show it quickly as well if we walk around. We, uh, we also have a blue bike station. So it's a shared bike uh, together with, uh, that's really designed uh, together with the train. So you buy a season ticket for uh, one year for 12 euro, and then it's 3 euro 50 per 24 hours. So the idea is that you take your bike to your destination, you go to your work, for instance, of to friends, and then you bring it back. Uh, and take back uh, take back the train. So it's also a back to one system. So always go back at the same same place where you where you borrowed it. It's been recently opened, so it's about half full at the moment, and it's been designed for the future growth. For all the details, you'll see the station looks a bit old, and there is a project on the long term to entirely rebuild it together with the city. There is a project to uh, deviate the ring, the ring road to put it on the ground with a tunnel, and the station will be also rebuilt, and the bike parking will go, I think, on the roof on the top of the of the station, so it will be elevated, and uh, this this place will become uh, a bus station and a, a car-free area to connect better to the to the city center. So about uh, the bike points. So in Belgium, we have uh, 36 stations with a bike point at the moment. And uh, the bike point idea is about, about 15 years old, approximately. And uh, the idea was uh, there's more and more people cycling to the station. And the bike parking are getting more and more chaotic. Chaotic, chaotic in a way that there are bikes a bit parked everywhere. And uh, there's no one actually to control anything. So this is where the idea came from bike points and also to have a human presence at the train station in the bike parking to also help the customers if they have a, a problem like they have a, a puncture or they also maybe if their bike is stolen that can be helped. There's also bikes that are rented there and for some small repairs. But for us, so we pay, we pay the bike points mainly to uh, really uh, take care of the bike parking, making sure it's, uh, there's, uh, it's, it's not chaotic. It's uh, the bikes that are wrongly placed, that are placed in the, in the, in the, in the stream of the passengers and so on, that these, these places are, are free of bikes and they are put back in the, in, in the railings, in the, in the racks where they're supposed to be. So yeah, the bike points, uh, so they are also what we call, the, there's a se several le uh, service level agreement. So they have to be open at least from seven to seven uh, during weekdays. Uh, you close on weekends. Close on weekends. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, so you have to do uh, visits, uh, regular visits, like uh, uh, one or two times a day in the in the bike parking to make sure there's nothing wrong being parked and so on. Uh, yeah, the actions. You measure also the occupation every three weeks or something, if I, or yeah, approximately, yeah. to for us to get the data and know. Okay, is it very busy? Do we need to plan some extra investments? Uh, uh, extend extend the bike parking. Normally here in Dampo, there's some margin that's been taken uh, into account, so it should be a problem. Mm -hmm. But also interesting to see yeah, how the secured parking is is um, is occupied because it helps us think about yeah changing maybe the way we uh, we're working now with these bike parkings. And again, this lower level parking is intended for the bigger bikes, like we see here with the Urban Arrow. And then for standard bikes, they really want them to use the double-decker so that they can make better use of the space. So, uh, yeah, so only season tickets. So it's um, for train travelers uh, who have a season ticket. It's 75 euro per year to have a season ticket there. For people who are, uh, don't, uh, are, don't have a season ticket, it's 125 euros for... Uh, for access to the to the secured bike parking, it's with uh, the same smart card as the one of the um, of the train. So they they don't need two two badges or something. It's all the same. They can also buy it directly to the machine of the train station. So you can uh, you can link your uh, transport card. You can link link your transport card together with your uh, with your parking card. It's for only one card. I think that's about it. I, yeah, and so it's from one month, one month you can also buy, but we have no offer for occasional uh, travelers, and that's something we're currently investigating to provide uh, an alternative for these people. Yeah, so you enter like this. Yeah. So it's a gate, and uh, you also have. Uh, so here in this one, there's 672 uh, parking spaces. And I think I don't have the season ticket holders, but I think it's about 30% of the capacity approximately, I think. Yeah. Something like that. So there's also a uh, growth. But what we noticed is that when you offer a very good uh, bike parking like this one, uh, people, and they, there's also this concept of uh, station feats of uh, station, station bike that is a very crappy bike. People are not that interested in this uh, access control system. I mean, that's what we feel, and you see it's very full, but it's less full than the other, uh, the other bike party. But the people with the expensive bike, they maybe put their bike more here yeah. than there. Yes, know? yes, but like I said, there's not so many people with expensive bikes. Okay. Yeah, uh, people, uh, yeah, they don't, um, yeah, I don't think they trust enough, the, even this one, to put a very expensive bike uh, mm -hmm. in there even though I think it's very secure. What happens is in the peak time, there can be several people going in, but at night when there's the most uh, bike theft happens, it's totally closed and there's, yeah, it's very hard to get in. So I don't know, yeah, they, there's a perception problem. And also a payment problem, we notice when we ask people uh, in surveys, they're not that interested in, uh, in paying to, se to secure their bikes. So now the policy is uh, in the secured bike parking to add a bit extra value to uh, the, the abonnement uh, season ticket products. We will provide also uh, charging points. Now what we provide is just, um, how do you say, uh, plugs. People can plug their bike if they want in, in the secured parking. I think I heard earlier uh, yesterday more, that, uh, and, uh, that there course, is an expansion uh, underway in the number of bike parking spaces at the main train said, station, okay, is that correct? For people yeah, who yeah, yeah. took up abandoned bicycles, uh, big I want bike away, lessons, I want this, also, I want that, that. so you get more money. Uh, but of course the, the administration is being renewed, yeah, only have one and then uh, this was true. But also now we're building with offices and stuff, and then there will be an extra bike parking below ground in this period. <laughs> Pretty impressive numbers, as I heard, too, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I don't know them by head, but it's, yeah. it's, uh, I think it's around 6,000. Uh, oh, places. you have the time at uh, <laughs> this moment? <laughs> right. Yes. And it's, uh, yeah, it's you always just walk inside completely uh, full. In, uh, um, yeah? You know, because we have this very big uh, okay. student population in Ghent. Yeah, yeah. Here, if you, you want to. And yeah, students, uh, yeah. yeah, students going home uh, over the weekend. Yeah. And they leave their bikes at the, at the train station, so that also makes, of course, 
Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's good. I mean, we want them to come by well, bike. Yeah, of course, of course. And of course, don't forget their bike. Yeah. <laughs> come back and get it. <laughs> that happens as well. Then. Yeah. That's a large part of the bikes that we pick up on the streets. You know, the student bikes that, I don't know, they, they finish their studies and they just leave their bike behind and because it's old and shitty, so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, believe me, I remember when I was a student, I, yeah. I parked my bike somewhere on campus and never did find it. Yeah. <laughs> totally forgot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's just uh, maybe park up on the side over there. Okay. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Hi guys. Well, like it's, every uh, day, sorry. <laughs> is there someone who will open the shop? Okay. Let's maybe uh, so, position uh, ourselves here so we don't block the, the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, okay. Yeah. Was it a little bit spot? Then I was responsible for HR, and then it was uh, we had <laughs> to let <laughs> people and uh, ah, okay. a lot of problems. Uh, it took some years to get it. <laughs> this is a service that we provide uh, for cyclists. We position ourselves on perfect. important well, hotspots well, perfect, uh, uh, <laughs> throughout the city. And we provide yeah. free air and free uh, chain oil. What is now? And how long have we there? How long have we there? Three hours? Oh, yeah, okay, switch. Yeah. Okay. So we do it a couple of campaigns per year. Uh, but also, like Some companies can also rent us men, 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 to men offer it to their the employees uh, to do it on, on their on site, sort of uh, and it's quite uh, quite smell. successful. And it's yeah part of this cycling culture. People are happy to see us, get a bit of help, and uh, well, they get to know us as well, uh, which also uh, is great for us. It's pizza massade. No, not every day. So there's uh, a couple of times per year that we do it. I think it's always about a week. Okay. Uh, and then two times per day we're on, on different sites. In the morning uh, at 7.30, yeah. so during peak hours, but now it's still a bit too early. So in 20 minutes there will be more, more cyclists coming uh, in this place now, okay. around 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock uh, till 5, 5.30. It's like, yeah. thank you for doing this for mm -hmm. free. And, yeah. yeah, it's a very positive yeah. atmosphere. Even the people yeah. who just cycle by and say it's not needed or say, oh, thank you anyway. And yeah. you know, it's, it's a really positive atmosphere uh, around these kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. I have a suggestion. When these people come through, we, we can. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Watch out for the <laughs> That's a, that's a big part of, of the, the mission, though, too. It's like, you know, trying to encourage more people to look at this. And that doing things like the bike parade are, are part of that. Yeah, yeah, that it's all Bring the energy this, up. This, yes. uh, cycling uh, adventure and culture. Yes. And then, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, yes. And yeah. Like these, uh, these small are actions, the they help to, yes. to, yeah. Yeah. for the cycling community and, and, and yeah. To feel strong and connected yeah. as a cyclist, uh, reinforce the positivity yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 So for that uh, pit stop there for the bike tire aid station, is mm -hmm. that uh, something that's typically set up on a pathway such as this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, we really try to focus on uh, you know hot spots where uh, where cyclists pass. Like this is a very typical co commuter. Uh, lane people right. coming from the station going yeah. home yeah so there's yeah. a lot of passage over here yeah uh, especially awesome. within an hour around five and people come back from work uh, yeah. yeah yeah and it's also nice too because it's not in direct conflict with uh, with cars yeah yeah, and yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 it needs to be more, more likely for people to stop and say you know exactly. what i do need air yeah, yeah, <laughs> thank yeah. you yeah <laughs> and as you say it needs to be safe for both the cyclists and the people yeah. working there so then yeah. And this is this is ideal. <laughs> yeah. 
You gotta love the spirit of Patrick there, where he's like uh, encouraging his. All right, let's clap for them. Let's applaud them. <laughs> so that is kind of a, goes back to what we were talking about earlier, is you know creating that spirit of yeah, fun uh, and excitement and energy. Yes, definitely. That's all. Uh, also something we do yearly. Yeah. This is uh, on International Bike Day, and we applaud the cyclists. Yeah. So we also take position at some hot spots and we applaud to the cyclists. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so how long have you been uh, in this role? Um, I started uh, February 2020. In that four-year time, talk a, a little bit about, you know, the, the, the session here is about the cycling culture. Talk a little bit about the cultural change that you see. Um, yeah, you know, I think uh, for Ghent, mm -hmm. Ghent has, has always been a cycling city because there's always been a big student population. Yeah. Uh, so that, yeah, it's always been part of, 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 of the city, I think. But then you have the circulation plan, yeah. uh, 2018, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And it gave a, a big boost yeah. to cycling. Uh, uh, mainly commuters, uh, because it just made access to the city and cycling inside the city centre easier and yeah. way safer. And then you have the Corona year, yeah. which yeah. also gave another boost to cycling. Right. <laughs> because yeah, it was one of the only things people were still allowed to do. Right. right. To go out and, and, and yeah. cycle and, and it, it stuck and yeah. people continued cycling. I like to say that it also kind of put pressure, you know, on a lot of cities for community members to reimagine what their streets are for. Yeah, they weren't driving as much, but mm -hmm. you know, they were mm -hmm. maybe out walking and biking more. Yeah, 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 yeah. And realizing that that walking and cycling is, is a healthy and fun fun way to, to get around without all the stress of, of being stuck in traffic. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're just going to cross here. Okay and just have a quick look at the pump. Okay. Yeah, I just want to quickly show you the other type of uh, public pump that we use. So with the, the handle turning. Uh, there's also a QR code that you can scan and then gives you a video of how it operates. <laughs> because still it's, it's not, not, not always yeah. easy for everyone to, to use. Yeah, well, just uh, the second uh, type of pump that we use in public spaces, uh, which have a Bit of a different way of, uh, of using them with a turning handle, which is less likely to, to break uh, or to be vandalized. So getting back to what we were talking about earlier, mm. uh, in the last four years and the change and everything, like, you know, what, a, what a fun way to kind of bring it to uh, this little era, you know, to a crescendo, if you will, of, uh, the peak of uh, Velo City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. It's a. Uh, I think it's a bit of a like a signal, like we're doing a good job. I mean, yeah. we're on the right way. Uh, the fact that we can organize uh, a congress like this, an yeah. event like this, it's uh, rewarding. And if you get all the the response from the people that are yeah. visiting now and. Say, wow, it's amazing what you've done, and this is really, uh, yeah, a cycling, cycling yeah. city. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's partly because the things we do. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Well, I like to it's say nice. it's, it's part of it is the is the infrastructure, it's the hardware, is like getting it built. Yeah. And the other part is what I call the software, which is all the programming and all the things that you do that mm -hmm. just make it easier yeah, yeah, yeah. for people to adopt a new lifestyle yeah, yeah, yeah. and create that culture of activity. Yeah. That's true. That culture of cycling. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you're very much part of that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I see that smile on your face. I think you must be makes quite happy. Yeah, it makes you happy. Yeah. Bravo. Bravo. Thank you. I think that's also part of it, you know, the culture and the software, as you say. Yeah. Uh, people now, I mean, a lot of parents use long tails, cargo bikes to yeah. transport tickets. Yeah. So children are used to bike and biking from a very young age and right. will yeah. very yeah. probably yeah. continue to do so. Yeah. 
And this, that's also the way that, that keeps the number of cyclists yeah, growing and it's yeah. becoming more and more the, yeah, just a way of, of, of getting around. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's normalizing it. Yeah. 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 With our limited crowd here, we, uh, we give Tomas a, a big <laughs> round of applause. So thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yay. Thank you.